Good. So earlier I presented how uh, deep neural deep neural networks and deep uh, neural layers they are used to solve the problem of image classification, and now the idea is to give you a, an overview of classic options to process videos. Okay. And uh, it's going to be shorter than the rest, so acknowledgments to previous students have helped in to prepare this lecture. And again, you have a video lecture from last year, which is going to be a bit longer than the one that I will present now, in case you want to watch it, that I that I'd recommend. Okay? So this is a task that we want to solve. I'm going to go through in, in this talk. So imagine that you have a video, and you want to uh, label the video with a class. Okay? In this case, there are like activities. So people doing some kind of activity. And on the top left corner, you see the, the class. And you see that it's evolving because of the moving, of, because of the, the way this model is, is working. Okay? So in this case, it's kind of, I don't know how often it's providing a, a, a prediction, but it kind of evolves in time in this case. Yeah? So that's the task we want to solve. It's like the image net, but for video. So one label for the whole video. That's, in this lecture, I will focus only on this, which is the most basic tasks you can think about for videos, OK? So that's it, like kind of the image net for, for videos. So first, just uh, an overview of what videos are and what different with respect to the images we had earlier. So remember that earlier I talked about neural architecture for image classification. Now we have video. So what's different? Uh, spatial coordinates x and y is not different. That doesn't change. The only difference is, not, is that now we have like another dimension, which is time. Okay, you can think that video, it's like a, you can think it's a volume of pixels if you want. Um, because of you have this extra axis. So whenever we have a, if we fix T, we obtain images. So you can think that uh, videos are sequences of images. That's one way of thinking about them. Yeah? So if earlier, in the previous lecture, uh, we presented that uh, convolutional neural networks are the best solution of state of the art to analyze images. And now what we have is a sequence of images. Um, how could we exploit what we know about uh, new architecture for still images for video? And this is an open question, so now you can start providing the solutions you have in mind. And there are, I will, we will draw re review four solutions, okay? And those of you who have taken this lecture, just refrain first to provide feedback, but how would you solve this question? Yes. Recurrent neural networks, okay. That's, a, that this, that's the type of layer that we haven't talked about it today, okay? But that's an option. Can, can you provide an idea of what recurrent neural networks are? Okay, so more or less, if you allow me, just to try to summarize. So, um, if I understand well, what you were saying, like you, I, c I could use the output of the model as input for the next frame. Is that what you were saying? Okay, so normally what you say this, when you, these models, they are more like, cause like, uh, so you can call them like recursive models. I, there are some type of models called auto regressive models because you, you so one frame rate, it's because they, they, the output depends on the, sorry, the, yeah, the output. Pre depend from the output from previous time steps. But in, in the special case of recurrent neural networks, that's a type of uh, neural architecture that uh, it naturally handles sequences, OK? They don't, need to, they don't need to be video sequences. It can be any type of sequence. Maybe you have a, a sequence of uh, values in the stock market, or maybe it's a sequence of uh, temperatures across days, OK? And here, the, the, the idea of recurrent neural networks is that basically they have memory, OK? So they kind of remember what they have predicted in the past. And there are different flavors of recurrent neural networks. Okay, there are maybe the most popular one is uh, LSTM, because it's a recurrent network that has some gates that allows to, to converge when you train them. 
Yeah, there are other ones which are popular, which are called grooves, which have some extra gates. And so that's that's it. So as if recurrent neural networks, they are uh, they have kind of a memory of what they have created in the past. And if we are processing videos, maybe it's useful to know what what what's what's in the previous timestamps of the sequence. Um, but you have a video, okay? So here I have a sequence of images, yeah, and. So if I have this, like, like exactly this sequence of images, these are RGB images. What do you think it would happen if you just fit that directly in a, in a, okay, in a recurrent you know, network? What it means is that there's just this, it has memory, okay? But you still need to know, like, what, what type of connections you're going to do with your neuron, between your, your, between your ne neuron and the pixels, yeah? If you do that, the classic approach, that's the, one, the first one that I presented earlier. Do you remember which one was it? The very first approach to say, yeah, let's, let's classify images. What's, let's do what? Fully connected, okay? So a recurrent network could be a, a fully connected. Normally, you draw it as a, a temporal connection. It means that it remembers what it has seen earlier. But it can be a fully connect connected layer with memory, with this recursive. Um, what if I fit it directly in onto this sequence of images? So one image after another. What do, you, what do you think the problem is going to be? I cannot hear, sorry. Too many parameters. So it's going to be the same problem as before, OK? So trying to solve visual problems with fully connected layers in general, that's it's not a, the best idea in many cases, OK? So we need to do something else. So what else do we need apart from some, some layer that remembers what it has seen in the past? What else do we need? Any options? Now, those of you who have seen the lecture before, maybe you can help. So you have an image. You have an, some structure there that remembers what it has seen. It has seen but this full connector layer, it's, it's too large to so there are too many parameters if I connect to the, to the image. What, what could I do? What would you do? OK, so you said just use convolutional filters. Yes, that's, that's a, OK, maybe. So one option is like, can you develop a bit more on what you have in mind? Well, exactly the same when we were using CNN for one image. So I give an image, I, I fit it into in the commercial filters, and where's the recurrency then? So if, if I just use the same as earlier, where, where do I put the, the memory? At the end. At the end? So I, I, I feed the image, I extract features at some layer, and then, then that's a smaller vector, because I can normally, let's say you take the fully connected layer, the first or the last one, which is smaller vectors, and you feed that into a recurrent neural network in the form of uh, fully connected. Yeah? There were other options there. Okay. So wait, wait, okay. That, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That's going to be so. There were like four solutions. Let's let's go now for for the three convolutions. Okay. So one of them is yeah, you I feed the image in a convolutional network, I extract features, and that's where I fit it to a recurrent neural network. Yeah. So that's that's number one. Okay. Now, uh, sorry, number two. Okay, so another option is like instead of having uh, 2D uh, filters, maybe it's a bit dif difficult to to imagine. Maybe the way you can visualize is just imagine that the video is grayscale. Okay, then earlier I I, sh I show you like those 2D flat uh, filters. So now imagine that it's it's 3D. Okay, but of course when when there are like many channels, then it's super difficult to imagine because it's the 3D from the temporal plus the dimension of the channel. So it's Probably it's, we cannot visualize it, but that's a concept. You, you can have convolutions of n dimensions, so there's no problem. Yeah. So this will be two solutions out of four. So we still need two more solutions. One of them is the super ultra mega basic, okay? And you, you just skip the super mega basic, and you just went into the more complex one. What other options could you do if you have this problem? And, you, and they ask you like, yeah, you want to solve this? Like, what could you do? Even if it's not the best option, okay? 
Okay, well, it's not even an update. You just, uh, in this case, you just predict for each frame something, and in this case, so you would have a prediction for each of the frames. You predict the class for each frame, and then maybe when you s you said update. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you somehow you do something to normally we don't use this word of pooling, but it can be like an average across all classes across all frames. You, you average everything, and then the the, the class with uh, the highest value that's the one that we predict for the video. Remember that we are trying to predict one class for the whole video, even if in this example it's kind of evolving in time. Yeah. Okay. So we have three solutions out of four. The fourth one is you need some knowledge about computer vision. So in computer vision, when you, uh, when you analyze motion, there's a tool that is quite common. So those of you who are more familiar with computer vision, that, y that allows you to estimate, I don't know, if, if I move in this direction or in this other, there's a tool or family of algorithms that are pretty good at estimating that. No, it's, it's the name of a technique. Optical. Optical flow, yeah. So there's a technique or a family of techniques that estimate uh, where, peop, where pixels move, okay? And there's many algorithms that do that. And they, so what they do is like, if we, uh, in the most basic option, you have a pair of, of, of images, of frames, and pixel by pixel, you try to predict each pixel of the first frame where it moves in the second pixel. Yeah, so it means that the output of this optical flow algorithm, it's, um, it's R2 arrays, because the, the motion, it, Basic, the most basic one is going to be a xy motion, or mind you, well, xy motion, so you break the x coordinates of the motion vector, the y coordinates, is two channels, and that's the optical flow. Yeah? And, okay, so that's it, that's the lecture. Now we can go through the slides, but that's the lecture, okay? So these are the four basic options for dealing with videos with neural networks. Okay? And if I run out of time, I think I will leave it here. Yeah, probably, I run out of time. So you can check the slides later at home, but that's so I just want you to remember this, this, okay? So that's everything you, you talk about, single frames, motion networks and recurrent, the three convolutions, and the RGB plus optical flow, which is which is just they are just more channels, okay? There are like some flavors here. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great option. So uh, probably that's as far as I remember, so always the, the issue of the performance is a bit tricky always because of the, the performance also depends on the amount of parameters computation you're going to use, okay? So it's a bit tricky-ish. Um, I think that let me, one of the best ones lately, or what is it? Here. That's one of the best ones. I'm not sure if Andreu has another option, but this it's like a 3D convolutions, but the third, so you don't treat the, the spatial and temporal direction in the same way, but first you, you have uh, 2D convolutions, you extract the features, and then you have temporal convolutions. So by this you save parameters. But really they're like, I mean, it's also challenging to, <laughs> to train everything, yeah? Okay. So there are like these words from, normally this group that's from Facebook and there's another group from DeepMind that they are doing nice words. But sometimes this, this, these are monsters if you try to run them. So there's no magic solution. I w so if you want to try it, probably about e easy-ish things to do, it's you extract the, C the, whether you extract the 2D CNN features and you fit that in the convolutional, that's easy-ish to do. And the RGB optical flow works pretty well. But optic computing optical flow, it's quite consuming in terms of computation, so it really depends on what you want. Yeah? Okay, so thank you very much.